to live in. And so it's this competition between the decorator and the realtor, right? Mm -hmm. And so then at the end, the couple sees this new home that they think would be fabulous, and then they come back into their old home as well, and it's looking so much better than what it was before, and they have to choose. Will we love it and stay, or will we list it and sell that house and give it away, I mean, sell it even though it has all these remodels in, and move into this new, this, this new place? Well, in the process of that remodel, inevitably, something bad happens, you know. It's like, we'll do the remodel of the upstairs, we'll put in the new bathroom, and we'll stick out the deck in the back, and we'll put this new wing on, and we'll do it all for this much money, and then, lo and behold, what happens? Trouble strikes, right? And what looked to be, yeah, things are in pretty good shape, then here, well, somebody came along and the I'm, I'm surprised that the electric didn't burn the house down as well. But, or because you didn't get Haynes plumbing to come in here and do the plumbing, the plumbing was a disaster, and the whole thing was down, and you got water running under your basement floor. Okay? And so there's always these internal underneath things that have to be done, and therefore the attention has to be focused on those things. Well, God's this master remodel. We can put on this nice veneer, we can dress up and wear ties and do all kinds of nice things and makes it look good, but then God comes in and he says, would you, would you, would you pay attention to this problem that's happening underneath? And whatever the issues are, I'm not so concerned about that. All what I just want us to know this morning is that we all carry this problem. And this problem is that we all deal with this sin nature. We all deal with this fact that we are sinful. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, Paul has got a hold of this finally. And he says, you know what? This is a trustworthy saying. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he doesn't say, and you all are the sinners. He says, exhibit A. And I... And the worst is what it says. Trust me, okay? okay? I am the worst, Paul says. So Paul's saying, I'm not telling you all out there that you're somebody bad and I'm somebody good. I'm just saying it's all of our human condition. Paul writes his great uh, treatise in, in, uh, in uh, the book of Romans. And in Romans 3, chapter 3, uh, verse 23, it says this. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All is one of the strong words. You sort of want to squirm and try to get out of it, but there's no way to go, you know. That line's covering the whole front. There's no hole, the gap between. It's just all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's everyone. Me too. You too. Not everybody else except all have sinned. No exception. Sinful, selfish, self-centered, arrogant, seeking immediate gratification. And if I have some sort of compassionate bone and I want to solve life's problems, I'll certainly want to do it so that it's good for me and built around me. Rather than saying, no, when we come to Jesus, we come to him on the cross and we build life around his perspective, around his vantage point, because he is the one that's the way, the truth, and the life. Last Sunday, we looked at this verse. That 1 John 1, 5, this is the message we've heard and declare to you. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. Another one of those strong all words again. There's no darkness. There's this purity in God. And there's a sinfulness in us. And if that's where we'd stop, we would be in a very desperate circumstance. But Paul goes on in the book of Romans and he gets to chapter 5, verse 6. And he says, you see, at just the right time, when we were powerless, Christ died for us sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely. Go to 7. <laughs> Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though someone perhaps might be willing to die for a 
person who is especially good. But God, dem but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So while we were still sinners, you know, I, I, I'm really glad that God didn't work on the sign-up sheet system. Amen. If I send my son, how many of you would sign up, you know? I need 25% participation before I'll send him. But Jesus just arrived. And then it becomes our choice, right? Here he is, coming to the earth, coming, suffering, in order to take on our sins, our failures, in order to absorb the broken areas unto himself, and to give us his life. Here's the trait. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. I'll take on your sin, you take on my righteousness. Hallelujah. In our Jada society, we say, what's the catch? It's too good to be true. And that's because it's a miracle. Yeah. This is the exception that proves the rule, okay? Amen. It is true. We say, <coughs> Jesus says, because of this amazing love of the Father that sends his Son, he takes on our sin and our iniquity. He takes on that brokenness, that sinful nature, and says, here, you begin to live my righteousness. You live in this identity. You live in this newness of life. You live from the position that you're my son, that you're my daughter. And as you do that, we'll work out the healing from the things of your life. We'll work out the things that have come against you. We'll work out the sin that you've been part of. We'll work out the sin and hurt and anger and abuse that's come against you. And there will be healing because that's what Jesus did. Amen. Next week we'll look more at that, the person of Jesus, and who he is, and how he is the one that makes that satisfaction, how he sets that model. But today we just want to look into this fact, that Jesus died for me. Amen. Jesus died for you. And he died because there was no other way for that gap to be crossed. This life, this perfection of God, this sin, this brokenness of me, need a solution that came from outside of myself. Thanks be to God that he had one son and he sent that son. And that son comes and lives and dies and absorbs the sin of the world unto himself. And we turn to that cross of Jesus and say, Jesus, would you apply that to me? See, just because it generally happens doesn't mean it specifically happens. You need to opt in. You need to ask in. It's available, but you ask. You ask and say, Jesus, because of your death on the cross, because you've drawn this way that makes it possible for all of the sin of the world to be drawn unto yourself, will you draw mine unto you there? Will you take mine unto you there? And then give me your life and give me your spirit and give me so that so wow. What a holy moment when that begins to take hold of us because this begins to mean that this suffering of Jesus is because of me. The suffering of Jesus is because of you. And suddenly my heart gets real humble. And suddenly I'm just sort of there saying, wow. And what's the response? But to come and worship. Amen. Why? 